As soon as I cut off that last video, I realized that I do something that I always do, is I always forget to ream. And so let me explain what the reaming process is. These right here are reamers, and there are different types of reamers. This one's called a spiral reamer, and this one's called a diamond dust reamer. And what reaming does is it takes cane from the inside of the tube so that it fits on the bocal, because right now it's a little bit too thick to fit on the bocal. I also use a regular size mandrel, so the difference between a forming mandrel, this is just a mandrel, mandrel is something that you can grip. The pin is smaller and blunter, it still has the line which I like, so if we put it on the mandrel we see that it doesn't quite go to the line and each bocal is different. Um, my reeds like to go to the line so that the bocal, so that it fits on the bocal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the spiral reamer first, and this is just a crude first cut. Put it in, and twist it. As you can see, there's cane coming out, and I just kind of blew it all the way there. Just gonna check, almost there. So I don't need this anymore. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see actually, but there are little fragments of cane that we don't want getting into the bocal. So I'm gonna use this kind of fine tune reamer, this diamond dust reamer to get that to go away. And then all of that, those shards and extra pieces are gone. And if we see, fits pretty close. I'm just gonna do just a couple more swipes. Pull it out, check, and that's pretty perfect. It now lines up with the line. So now the next process is to soak it up and put it on the tip profiler. So the next process utilizes a machine that's called a tip profiler. A lot of people don't own a machine like this. I got this as a graduation present, so I've been using it for the last couple of years. It's a profiler, but it only does the tip of the reed, which eradicates the process of hand scraping the tip of the reed. So I only have to scrape the back of the reed and then do some further work to get a finished reed. So. What you do is you have to flatten the reed because if you don't, it will make a mark because it only goes, as you can see, it only scrapes up to here. So it'll make a mark like a ledge if you don't flatten the reed. So I flatten it the first and second wire. Then put it here. Push it all the way up to the line there. Make sure it's centered and tight. Then I use it like I use the profiler. As you can see, it took off a lot of cane. I use this old toothbrush just to clean out the blade, make sure that there are no jams or anything. And I'll do it until it doesn't want to take any more cane off. Clean it out again. See if it wants to take any more off. Not really. So then I'll loosen it and flip it to the other side. And do the same on the other side. So the 
the way that this works, and the way that the profiler works as well, there's a wheel here, a blade here, which let me clean out. And this, it's called the template. And you can see kind of here that there's uh, usage marks from where the wheel has been pulling into. And these templates can be changed according to however you want your read to look. And so for the profiler, the template has a certain, it has certain measurements in, uh, wired into it. And that's the way that this template is also shaped. It's, it's shaped so that it takes more out of the corners or the wings as they're called and leaves more in the center. And people can change it how they want. So that's how a tip profiler and a regular profiler work. So now I'm just going to be using the same um, forming pin that I used before like this to re-round the inside because I flattened it. So I'm just going to re-round it here. And I'll show you now, when you're working with the wires, if, if you squeeze anywhere on the wire, it changes the opening of the actual reed. So as you can see here, it's pretty closed now. But if I squeeze the first wire, so if I squeeze the first wire from this side, it will open up the reed. I hope you can see that. It'll open up the reed. And that's too much, so I'm just going to close it, and it does the opposite. So if I do it here, it will close it. With the second wire, if I squeeze it from the side, so like so, then that will close it. Whereas if you did it on the first wire, it would open it. And if you do it in the second wire from here, it opens it. So you just, you want to kind of mess around with um, the openings, with the wires, wire openings to find your perfect combination. I like a more round wire. And now where I said before, the, the wires are pretty loose, so I'm going to tighten them now. That they stay tight. You always want your wires staying tight or else the reed can become too flabby and too out of tune. So I'm just going to cut off my excess, bend them back down, and do the same with the first wire. That's pretty good. So now, do I like the opening? I think I do. I'm just going to round the second wire a bit and maybe fix the first wire just a tiny bit. And that's a read. So the next part of making a read is the most tedious and most time consuming section of making reads. And that's the scraping part. And for the scraping part, we scrape in different areas of the read to produce different results. So I'll show you the areas of those reads now, of the read now. So from here to here, it's called the tube. The read can be divided into two parts. This is the tube, and it's the part that we don't scrape. And then from here, this right here is called the collar. And from the collar all the way up to here is called the blade. And we scrape on the blade. And you can use many different ways of scraping. You can use a knife, you can use files. Um, a lot of people prefer files and a lot of people prefer using knives. Um, I kind of use a mix of both. I like to use a knife for uh, kind of fine tuning everything and I like to use a file. This is just a file um, when I'm first scraping the reed. And this reed that we're going to be working on is in here. The, I'm just gonna show you the actual regions of the reed right now. So again, we only scrape on the blade and the reed can be sectioned off into sections. So from the collar, basically up there, up to the very top, this is called the spine of the reed. And usually this is where it stays heavy. The spine can produce high notes. And if you scrape too much in this area right here, it can uh, cause your high notes to not want to come out and or not want to be in tune. So we don't want that. So we want to keep this back part of the reed pretty heavy. 
And then from here to about here. Try that again. These sections right here are called the wings. And I don't do any scraping up here because my tip profiler does it all for me. Um, but you can do some fine tuning because you, you can uh, kind of blend it in here along this area using a knife or a file. I use a knife. These sections right here, kind of in between right here and right here. These are called the channels. And this is to produce more uh, sound out of the reed. So if you have kind of a stuffy reed uh, that doesn't want to create a good sound, um, definitely scrape in the channels. And then it's kind of hard to draw here, but basically the very, very sides of the reed. So right here, you can see that they're pretty thick right now. They're called the rails. These right here are called the rails. And when you scrape down the rails, it creates a better taper on the instrument. And a taper just means that you can decrescendo very softly without the reed kind of cutting out. Um, and they're right here, I'd say. Um, this section right here is called the heart. And if you scrape there, it's literally, it's called the heart of the reed. So if you take out the heart, then it kind of loses all its life to it. Um, and like I said before, this is the collar back here. And so we scrape this whole section of the reed um, and we can do that in different places. So that's how we know when you see bassoonists just like kind of scraping along in rehearsal, we always know what we're scraping and what we're trying to get out of it, get out of the reed or get the reed to do something better. So those are the sections that we're scraping. Let's get into the scraping part. So since I already tip profiled this reed, Basically the only thing that I need to do uh, is scrape in the back and this reed might vibrate. It's very, very, very heavy in the back so we can test it out. <laughs> yeah, so it'll vibrate and what you just heard is called a crow. It's um, something that kind of tells us, we can hear pitches in the crow and it can tell us, you know, if this reed is going to work or not. We can hear uh, low overtones in the crow, mid overtones in the crow, and high overtones in the crow. So we can scrape in different sections to produce either higher tones, mid tones, or lower tones, and that'll help with um, the overall sound of the reed. So while this vibrates right now, if I were to play it on a bassoon, it would be incredibly tough to play. I would basically be having to blow my brains out. So what we're gonna do is scrape the collar first. And so to do that, I'm going to be using this regular mandrel, putting it on the mandrel, and this plaque. This is called a plaque. This is actually a contrabassoon plaque. They, uh, they make regular bassoon plaques, but I like to use a contrabassoon plaque just because um, I think I have more room to, to work and I can see everything better. They make these in plastic and metal and whatever. They come in all shapes and sizes, but I just like to use a clear contrabassoon plaque. So I'm going to take my file here, I don't know what name or what grit or anything this file is, and I'm going to use my water here to just, you can do this dry or wet, um, I use a mixture of both, but right now what I'm going to do, I hope you can see that, yeah, I'm just going to take the rough edge of the file and make a collar. I posted a video about this before, but if you haven't seen it, then I'm just going to be doing it now. So I'm just digging into the back of the reed to make a ledge where the collar should be, where before it just kind of blended directly from the collar into the blade, and I just don't want that. I have it. So you can see where it just 
blends in effortlessly. On this side, there's now a ledge. And I like that. Some people prefer to keep it like this side. I like it. So I'm going to do that to the other side. Using the same process so using this file. problem that people run into, and especially something that I run into quite a bit, is the problem of over scraping. And so it's very easy for one to literally over scrape um, and create holes in the reed that you know it won't, it won't do what you want it to when there are holes in it. So that's the problem that I run into quite frequently. So hopefully I don't do it now <laughs> for the sake of showing you all how to make a reed. But just watch out for that when you're making now I have a pretty defined collar on both sides. And a tool that the students use to measure to make sure that we're not over scraping or under scraping or anything is this thing that's what's called a dial indicator. And I'll show you how to use it now. Basically, it measures the thickness of each blade. So if you put it back here, it will measure, I'll show you. This is in millimeters of an inch. So literally it's the thickness of a millimeter of an inch. So do it, put the reed on there, and drop it, it needs to be flat. So right now it's measuring about 0.84. So that's 0.84 millimeters of an inch. And that's close to what I want it. I still want it to go down a little bit. I want it to be about 0.76. So I'm going to do just a little bit more scraping and see if I can get it down some more. And I'm only doing very, a very, very small amount of scrapes so that I don't over scrape it. going to measure it again. And now it's measuring only went about only went down to about 0.81 so it's just a very time consuming process but if you over scrape then you've lost everything so I'm going to try and go very slowly so that I don't over scrape. Okay, and that is now measuring about 76, but only in one spot. So I'm now going to avoid that spot. The spot that measured 0.76 was right here. So I'm going to avoid that area. Do the same thing. still pretty thick. So again, I'm going to avoid that area and scrape around just to get it all even and all down to 0.76. think that that is pretty good. So now it's down to 0.76 all around, all around this 
back collar area. So um, I think for now I'm just going to show you one side. Just make sure that whatever you do to one side you want to do to the other because you don't want one side to be uneven with the other because they're going to be vibrating against each other so you want them to be parallel. So after I get the back done, I'm just going to do a general scraping from about 11 millimeters up on the reed to, my teacher likes to call this the fingernail. And this is where the, the wings and the tip are and they're already thin enough so I'm not going to touch those areas and I'm not going to touch behind here. So I'm only going to be doing a general scraping in this area. the dial indicator in the back. Other than that, I use the light. Um, let me see if I can actually show you all what it looks like. So I use this lamp right here and you can see the focus. Well, it's kind of hard to see. You can see that there's light kind of showing through the actual reed and that's called a profile. Well, you can't see it, but if you imagine, you can kind of see how there's a profile and you go off of that and there are different profiles that you can use. So I'm going to look that at that in the light and see if I like it. And I do, but what I'm going to do now is use this knife to do more in the fingernail area. And most people use a mandrel. I think it's actually easier for me to just use my hands and I hold the reed like this with the plaque in it, take the knife and scrape just in that uh, fingernail, finger, fingernail area that I showed before. Doing very, very little here because it's very easy to over scrape. Again. and leaving it like that for now. So that's basically what um, the first scrape looks like when working on reeds. What I like to do um, after it dries, because when it dries it will all change, so you don't want to do everything and then play it and think that it sounds good just to have it change completely the next day. So I usually go through a drying process where I just let it sit um, for a day and then I come back to it the next day and see what I need to do. And usually in that next day, I like to scrape in the channels. That's basically where I scrape for the remainder of scraping on the reed. I scrape in the channels and I scrape in the rails because the rails seem to be pretty thick. And so if I scrape the rails, I'll show you what it looks like because I'm, I'm going to be doing it anyway. So, if you can see, this is, the plaque is kind of separating, um, there, that's a better view. The plaque is, is separating the two rails so you can see just how thick the rail is. So I'm gonna take my knife, and I'll use a, a mandrel for this, I'm gonna take my knife, hold it like this, and just do kind of an overall scraping of just the rails. So it's turned at a side. So I'm just getting the rails here. I'm gonna use that. And as you can see from before, the very, very side has gone down drastically. I'm gonna do a little bit more in the back because it's still kind of heavy in the back. Again, I'm using a very, very light touch, something that you would, you could even do on yourself with on your nail or, or your skin or whatever and not cut yourself. kind of have a chunk there, um, as you can see, but I'll take that off with a file. So that's just a general sanding, sanding down, scraping down of the rails in order to get it to be more controlled. And usually in the second day scrape, I will do channel scraping, which I'll show you now. So I start from the very collar 
backing it with my thumb so that I have more control and kind of shimmying it up throughout the channels, not touching the spine and not touching the rails, just getting there in the channels. I only do a little bit and I do the same on this side. Again, just in the channels. Like so. And you can see now that there's um, a start of a spine of what looks like a spine. I usually keep that. If your reed is too boisterous and too loud, sometimes if you take this down a hair, it will control it more. And again, controlling the reed to make it softer and more, uh, more of a taper, you go in the, in the very rails and kind of at the tip a little bit. And if it's too loud and, and uh, too, I guess, reedy, too fuzzy, um, take it down in the, in the spine a little bit. And again, with this entire process, everything is personal and it comes down to personal preference and teacher preference. So. It, you really just, it takes years to master, and over the years you find different things that will help you. So I hope that this whole process at least, you know, gave you an insight into how reads are made from start to finish. So I hope you enjoyed.